Hey guys, so for today's video I thought we might try something a little bit different, although I've got to admit that I feel myself saying that quite frequently on this channel these days. Uh, but yes, today I am going to be giving you guys a tour of my website. Uh, my website is hosted on NeoCities, and just before I kick off with it, I'd actually like to introduce you to NeoCities.org. Uh, if you're getting a few uh, hearkenings of nostalgia, that might be because, of course, GeoCities uh, run by Yahoo, I believe, at least uh, towards the end, was a fantastic little website creation platform as well for its time that allowed you to create websites, and that's how I learned how to do HTML and, and CSS, and that's basically what my got, what got my uh, my foot on the ladder into a lot of other stuff as well. So um, yeah, I I really sort of connect with NeoCities, which is a sort of an open source version of a website platform kind of in the same spirit as GeoCities, but uh, more focused around the idea of coding the website yourself. So, so it's an open source platform. The platform itself is open source. The uh, source code, I believe, is available on uh, GitHub, I think. NeoCities on GitHub. So you can check that out. And um, yeah, it's an absolutely wonderful um, platform here. Uh, you can sign up for free and have a website, but there are also there is also a, uh, a supporter mode, uh, which uh, looks pretty awesome. And that is um, it's five dollars a month. So it would be like about the same to host the same or a similar website on a I don't know DigitalOcean droplet or something in that ballpark. But um, this is a this is a lot easier to, to get up and running. Um, yeah, NeoCities fantastic. Check it out NeoCities.org if you are interested in even just learning uh, the basics of HTML. And CSS is optional. Um, I suppose you, you tend, they tend to come as a, a pair nowadays. Um, but yeah, if you're if you're looking at the very basics of, of coding HTML, CSS, this is a great place to learn. Uh, so this is the website in question, uh, and as you can see, it's it's very basic looking. Now I've decided to go for the dark background and uh, the the lighter text. I think that's like a shade of grey. Maybe it might even be white. I'm not into ah. We can check. Um, ah, so this is the CSS file that uh, th that themes the website. So part of the philosophy of actually this website itself is to use uh, is to be as lean as possible to use as little code as possible. So all of the stuff that you see on on that website is um, is, is is visually governed by this just this small amount of code here. Now what I've done here is that this this top line here where it says media only that means like screens only. So um, if I, for example, wanted to print this website, um, it'll give me a preview here. That's what it would look like. So it, it would look very much like a uh, an un unformatted website completely. So we can uh, get out of this. Uh, and that allows me to just completely theme the website as I want. If someone wants to print it out, they've got a very you know sort of standard looking, but everything is visible and everything is clear uh, sheet to work with. So. Um, that uh, so yeah back to the CSS um, so I've got background is um, 222 this is the three letter hexadecimal code you can use the six letter which would be 222 222 um, but I like to use the three letter hexadecimal codes just because it's easier for memory um, it's easier to work with and generally I can find whatever color I want within those uh, three hexadecimal digits but um, if not I've always got six or I can always use RGB a as well if I wanted to have a translucent color, but uh, that aside, I've also made the font 1.2 em. So em is um, is a proportional measurement of the font. But the thing is as well is that using em as a standard measurement allows your website to scale in its entirety. So this website um, is going to look you know as good on a mobile as it does on a desktop. Uh, so. Um, so so yeah, I've I've done all my measurements in EM, and that's a common way that people like to, to to have scalable kind of websites. It's quite easy, quite simple, quite straightforward in a lot of cases. Um, and I've decided to so one is like a standard font size, but one point two is one hundred and twenty percent of a standard font size. Uh, so I've made the font uh, slightly slightly larger than you might find on most websites because it's just clearer, easier to read. And um, since I'm using a, um, a flexible width, you know, since I'm basically letting the text take up the entirety of the screen rather than narrowing it down into a column, um, I, I've, you know, I, I feel like it. Um... Hey, Shrek. <laughs> okay, back to business. So, um, yes, I have. Um... 
pretty standard uh pretty standard uh, theming when it comes to the 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 links uh for my images i write i largely uh make it so that they uh, float left or float right um except when uh it's a narrow screen when it's like maybe looking at a mobile and then then i sort of form all of the the theme into one neat little column and i'm actually you know the the the, the, the website does look pretty good on, on on mobile devices i'm happy to say uh so uh, this section of code at the bottom where it says media only screen and max width 400 pixels basically means that when the width of your screen is slimmer than 400 pixels, uh, the website itself will uh, reformat it into a more mobile friendly format. So very, very basic, um, very, very basic uh, CSS layout here. I've relied a lot on, on very standard defaults, and basically my philosophy towards it is make the text nice, pick out a nice font, pick out a nice color scheme, and really, uh, the, you know, the browser will take care of the rest. Uh, it's the, I think the, the part of the philosophy is that when you get too much into the micromanaging of defaults and spacing and all that kind of stuff, you end up going, you know, down the rabbit hole as such, and then you've got maybe a CSS file that's three times as long to only tweak it a little bit here, a little bit there. But what I really want is a pretty standard website that just has some nice colors to it. And uh, that's really all the uh, all the code it needs. Uh, just in regards to the font, now, I, am, I would never pull off a, a font in from another um, source online, be it uh, Google Fonts or anything else, because to me, that just is unnecessary bandwidth. Like, most people don't care what font is on your website. Uh, it's it's you know <laughs> it's it's quite straightforward in that regard. So what I've done here is I've picked out Liberation Sans, which is a font that I I really quite like the look of. It's on almost every Linux distribution, and um, and if it's not available uh, within the um, the browser's uh, font library, then it'll just default to a sans serif font, which is a you know just whatever sans serif font the browser wants to use really just as long as it doesn't end up throwing something like times new roman into the mix where things will then start looking a little bit i don't know i don't know if it's just me but this sort of color scheme doesn't seem to suit a serif font size i don't know um i can't say i've really ever tried it but i always associate serif font types with more warmer colors perhaps a warmer color scheme so maybe if i had an orange uh, orange colors for the links then um then uh, anyway uh, that aside uh yeah very simple css file so um i'm quite happy with that uh this is the source code for the index page itself so it's not very long there it is and uh yeah i look forward to you guys pointing out all the mistakes in it <laughs> um it's quite a simple uh, and straightforward uh index page it just basically links out to the rest of the website so this is it. This is the website itself, the masterpiece in action. Now, as you can see, I've decided to let all the text take up the entirety of the uh, the monitor width. Now, if you're viewing this in a mobile, I think a good way to perhaps simulate that might be just to have the window a little bit. There we go. Um, and uh, for example, the Game of Thrones page looks quite different. So you've got this nice one column down here. Actually, this is a little on the narrow side. Um, so you've got the down here, down here, down here. And then this stuff with the uh, with the paper effect would usually be you know, the second column. So that's an idea of uh, mobile and, uh, and the desktop. So that's pretty good. So back to the page. Now, rather than faffing around with navigation bars and, and consistent theming, and, and oh, well, not necessarily consistent theming, I'll get to that in a, in a moment, uh, but when it comes to, um, m you know, navigation, my philosophy is basically here to have the the main content right up here with the contents, and then just to have like a home link here in the, um, in the header section. So if I open up the code, you will see that my header here is just the link to Chris Ware's website. So, uh, and all pages have that. So if I wanted to go to the Game of Thrones page, it would just uh, pop in there. And since we're on the Game of Th Thrones page, I might as well start off with the site here. Uh, so this is basically a scrapbook of where I put my Game of Thrones theories, notes, ideas, predictions, because I want to have a a place to point to where I can say, aha, I uh, you know I, I thought of that 
ahead of time and things like that. Um, and thanks to the Internet Archive, which uh, covers near city sites, I believe, and I think this has been archived by uh, the uh, the Wayback Machine. Uh, I can then sort of point to that and go, "Ha ha! I put it on my little near cities website before beforehand." I also like put notes that uh, so you might might see some potential theories come out of uh, out of the, the the ramblings here. Uh, this, for example, this table was the notes that I was making on my last Game of Thrones video, uh, talking about which characters represent which parts of the uh, the seven pointed star and uh, this is just a very short uh, table which I hope to grow in time of predictions for who will sit on the Iron Throne when the show ends uh, so Heather's got Jon Snow I've got Sansa Stark I might do might do a video while I think about that but um, Queen Elizabeth the first is my clue so anyway that aside Nice little page here, uh, and it links into my YouTube uh, playlist where I play the, where the Game of Thrones videos are, and the RSS feed for the playlist. And that's a, an interesting theme for the rest of this website, is that a lot of the links that have RSS attached to them, I've actually included the direct links here. So if you are a fan of RSS feed, if you have an RSS reader or anything else like that, you, um, yeah, you can. So my BitChute account, that has an RSS feed. Mastodon has an RSS feed. Not all of them are native. So for example, Twi um, my Twitch, it has an RSS feed that's run by a third party. So, uh, But I do believe it is an open source platform. Yeah, here we go. And it is licensed... Well, I mean, the code's available up here on GitHub, and the license is Apache license version two. So yeah, yeah, it is, uh, it is open source there. So good oh. Uh, and uh, uh, Twitter is the same; it's a similar kind of uh, scenario there. But uh, I really only use Twitter to boost videos, so that's uh, that's about that. And complain to the phone company, of course. So. Um, Okay, so now you may be asking initially, why is the Game of Thrones website, or why is the Game of Thrones page, uh, page themed differently? And as you can see here, I have a um, serif font that I think looks quite nice, but as you can see, I'm using warmer colors. I've got orange here. So if I open up the code for this, so as you can see, this is, well, that's not too much CSS code. Like, that's not too much, is it? You know, because that's... that's there's, there's some some effects going on there, isn't there? Some effects. So it's a, that's not a particularly large amount of CSS for what you get, uh, and that's what that looks like. So so the reason I've decided for Game of Thrones, my Game of Thrones page, is for fun. That's the reason why it's themed a little bit differently. I've put the code baked right into it, um, but quite frankly, I make this website because I enjoy it, and having the nice little brick layout effects and the different color schemes. I don't care if it fits or goes together. And to be honest, I think that a little bit of eclectic design just makes it a bit more fun. It just reminds you that a human made this website. And and I, I noticed that a lot about the open source world and why it endears me so much. The, the software that's made uh, by people who who who've just put themselves into it and it could be anything from a piece of video capture software to a game or or or, or online platform or anything like this. It, it has a soul that you cannot get um, elsewhere, I genuinely believe. And maybe, again, this is cause for another video, but there is something absolutely beautiful about a labor of love. And I see that in things like Neo Cities. I see that in uh, Super Tux Cart. And, you know, that is a game with a real soul. So, uh, so and, and part of that, you know, is, is just like, having fun making it and and expressing that fun and and i you know i kind of like playing around with css and html and, and throwing something like this together it didn't you know it, it was an afternoon and it, and uh and it sharpened up my coding sk oh well, i i i'm saying html like it's coding is not really but it's you know it's just sharpening up the old uh the old memory anyway so uh what else have i got here now the thing is about this, the overall idea of a Neo Cities website is that it's static content. It is not a feed, and I think this is an, an antithesis to a lot of um, issues on the web caused by very disposable information, like the idea that we just read a tweet or read, you know, a short post and then discard it for the rest of time. Of course, it's never discarded. It's 
it's clocked on a server somewhere. But with NeoCities, everything in it is completely curated. So it's not, you know, you're not going to have some, you know, half thought out uh, status update or anything like that. Everything on this website has had a considerable amount of thought behind it. Um, and, and, you know, the, the if there's something that I don't want on it, I don't wait for it to scroll down the feed to, you know, escape my notice. I just remove it, I delete it. Um, and when I write content for this website, I want it to have a purpose and I want it to have uh, a, like a long lifespan. I don't want it to be the thoughts of the moment, the kind of stuff, you know, a lot of videos that I make, they're videos of the moment, they're videos of the day or videos of the week, where maybe in a couple of weeks' time, they just, they just wouldn't mean anything. But this website, it's, you know, it's a living, breathing website that changes and adapts as, uh, as, as, as it fulfills different requirements and, and uh, as it, f you know, fulfills different purposes. But, for example, uh, how, you know, how to get RSS URLs from YouTube channels and playlists. That's like a useful bit of information to some people. Having it buried down in a, in a long list of, of, uh, of, of posts and blog posts and all that kind of stuff, really, I, I think would be doing it a disservice, as would my fantastic Game of Thrones theories. I mean, they probably aren't very accurate, but I hope that they're at least a little bit entertaining, especially the one where the mountain might be Azura High. It's probably not true, but, you know. Uh, so, useful apps and interesting websites. That is the piece de resistance of the, uh, of the website itself. Let's, uh, let's check that one out. So, this is what you guys want to really come to my website for. These are all my open source except for the web apps that are closed sourced, uh, tools that I recommend. So in the apps section, I'll just pop down into apps. Um, I definitely lean towards some apps. For example, Krita is here because it has an app image. It has a really good app image as well. Um, and it's also a really good uh, really good program there. Uh, GIMP is great as well. I use GIMP for, the, for all the thumbnails. VLC Media Player, and there are some third-party app images for that. Uh, there's Water, you know, Waterfox, Caden Live, which of course I'll be editing this video on. Uh, Etcher, which is a, an app image which you can burn ISOs with. Drawio, if you want a very simple drawing program. Atom is a nice code editor, but it's in Electron, so it's rather heavy. And uh, I'm on KDE at the moment, as you can see, which has uh, Kate as its text editor, and that's really, really good. And on Mate, it has Pluma, which again is a really, really good, uh, really good little uh, text editor there. So as you can see, uh, and there's RSS Guard, which I am using actually down there with the 300 and goodness knows how many, <laughs> how many uh, unread articles I've got there. So and that's from today. So um, and I've got some games here, which are mostly op uh, which are all open source here. Um, they're worth checking out. I think I'm pretty sure. Yeah, Red Eclipse is available as an app image. Uh, these are web apps that are open source. Uh, again, if you're looking for some, you know, if you, if you require one of these services, then uh, and you want to go the open source way, this is pretty good. Um, yeah, so I've got like Open Street Maps. Uh, Piskel is pretty cool. Uh, Repio is pretty good. That's a is that is that website still going? Yes, it is. So that's just a, uh, a file sharing browser. So, a file sharing browser? It's like a file sharing website. It like, uses BitTorrent to transfer files across the internet from one person to another. It's really quite useful. Um, Jitsi Meet, which is great for video chat and conferencing. Um, and then you've got, uh, yeah, like Haste Bin and D uh, Paste and things like that. They're like uh, paste bins. So, um, yeah, and I've got some closed sourced closed source web apps um, and these are just actually mail for spam and, and temp mail are just disposable email address services uh, but they are quite useful if you don't want to sign up to a web uh, to a website with your real address uh, also online resources ambient mixer that's great for background noises if you like um, you know the sound of a fire burning or you like the sound of the Gryffindor common room because that's a preset in, in there then uh, yeah the ambient mixer is uh, that is pretty damn awesome. Uh, Defont is a great little font website because that lets you search fonts by their license. So if you only want to use free and open source fonts, then you can only search for free and open source fonts. It's really good. Uh, Pixels is really good. Large uh, library of public domain images and uh, Incompetech, which is basically uh, Kevin MacLeod writing the soundtrack to the internet. So yeah, as you can see, and they're quite a good set of useful Mastodon tools there as well. And uh, oh yeah, some interesting how-tos and fixes. Yeah.
So uh, yeah, there's a really easy, straightforward way to get rid of all the JPEG um, metadata uh, on from the command line, which is pretty cool. So yeah, and I update that this particular site particularly regularly, so it's definitely worth a watch. Why does your website look like that? Is just it's basically the blog of the website, but I've only done two posts for it because I've only actually edited the theme. Uh, once and that was to add in the color scheme before it had zero uh, theming whatsoever and that's what it looked like down there uh, but you can read a little bit about the history a little bit about the inspiration behind it a fair number of people do suggest from time to time that I actually narrow the width of the page uh, so that people aren't scanning across the entirety of the screen but I gotta say you know I, I sort of bolstered up the size that uh, to make it a little bit easier to read in that regard um, but I kind of like having a lot of information on the screen at the same time. I know a lot of people are going to consider it a wall of text, uh, and there are like better ways of formatting it. But to um, to narrow it down into a column, I, it just doesn't feel right to me, I, I guess. Um, but then again, that's just me, and uh, and uh, that's the way it goes, I guess. So. I think that's about it for this website, but I do encourage you guys to try neocities.org and uh, and make your own. I've got a few links here as well to, to other stuff. I've got linked, of course, to my Mastodon email address there if you ever guys want to get in touch that way. Um, and here I've got a list of all the places that I regularly um, update my content to. So there's BitChute. This, this channel is, of course, mirrored on BitChute. Hello, BitChute people. Uh, there's Mastodon there, Patreon, of course, where the audio only versions of a lot of my videos are. This probably won't make it onto Patreon because I keep saying things like look over there and look at the colour of that and stuff like that which wouldn't really make sense if it was audio only. There's Twitch of course, uh, Twitter uh, and my WordPress blog which basically is where videos and, and audio stuff gets auto posted. You can go to the WordPress blog and sign up by email if for some reason you wanted to get email updates whenever I posted anything. If you do decide to go down that route I do recommend you go for the daily digest or maybe even the weekly one if there's an option uh, because when I upload a video um, and I'll you know and I might upload the sound clip to, to Patreon you don't want to get like two emails in your inbox but um, uh, that's just a suggestion there. One of the things I really like about WordPress as well is that you, when you categorize all your different articles, so I've got audio content, video content, Game of Thrones related content, uh, they all come with corresponding RSS feeds. So that's, I, I think that's, uh, that is a really cool little feature there. Um, so I can just pop that open and then uh, yeah you've got all the uh, all the RSS stuff. It's a shame it doesn't make it look nice like Firefox. I was expecting it to look nice there for a second because I'm usually on Firefox, but no, it just gives you the raw code there. So yeah, you can use RSS Guard or your RSS Reader, something like Feedly, uh, and that will allow you to uh, subscribe to me in all the different ways there. Uh, yeah, and Twitch does have an RSS uh, feed, uh, which is basically the you know the video on demands the videos that get uh, recorded after you stream uh, they get uh, popped into an RSS feed which uh, which is ugly as sin but it does the job I guess so there we go uh, Patreon PayPal and LibrePay are also and also the old Bitcoin wallets there. So that's it. That's my nice little humble abode on the internet. Uh, I gotta say, I love I love Neo Cities. It's absolutely fantastic. Uh, and sometimes, if I get bored, it's just nice to dip in and um, you know edit a few uh, styling elements, maybe write something down. So I think that's about it from me today. Thank you very much for stopping by. But this is uh, this is my little scrapbook on the internet that I'm. Um, yeah, you know, it's just a place that feels like home, I guess. But uh, yeah, thank you all for stopping by. Uh, don't forget to check out neocities.org. It's a really good website for those looking to uh, brush up on their HTML, CSS, and um, chrisware.neocities.org if you are looking for some interesting links or Game of Thrones theories. So uh, that's about it from me today. Until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Take care now.